Merci. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I was fishing this morning. It's true. The river was great, but there was no fish on my line. But it doesn't matter. People who do fly fish here know that the experience is being on the river. Fish comes as a bonus. Isn't it true? Je vais remercier. I want to thank uh, Noël Latif, uh, President and CEO of the Foreign Policy Association. Monsieur le Délégué Général du Québec, uh, Jean-Claude Dozon. Bravo pour nos professeurs uh, ici avec nous, nos enseignants pour l'avenir. Vous êtes l'avenir de, de notre peuple. Nos partenaires du Québec, nos entreprises qui sont ici réunies également. Don't worry, only a few words in French, and then you'll be able to follow, I'm sure. But I know, I, I, I'm sure most of you know some words of French from your high school time. Isn't it true? Je veux vous remercier une fois de plus pour l'accueil chaleureux que la Foreign Policy Association réserve au gouvernement du Québec. Yes, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here with you tonight. I would first like to thank Noel and the FPA for this award and congratulate as well all the other recipients tonight, of course. Quebec's relationship with the FPA is a true example of collaborative success through which the promotion of trade, innovation, education, culture have fostered opportunities that serve both Quebecers and New Yorkers. I feel honored to address such a distinguished crowd in a city that holds a special place in our heart. Its energy, its space, even its rain today, and above all, its people, remind me of the importance for Quebec to continue to build and strengthen our partnerships here. The city is a microcosm of the interconnected, innovative, and globalized world we all live in today. A world in which I have the great honor and privilege to serve as Premier of Quebec since 2014. A world that prospers when we work together. And Quebec is prospering today. We are experiencing record employment with 230,000 jobs created in four years, the strongest economic, economic growth in the last 18 years. Thanks in part to its high-tech and creative sectors, Montreal saw 3.6% growth in employment last year, putting it at the top for job growth in cities in Canada and the US. So how did we get there, you may be asking? It's quite simple, actually. Simple, but not always easy to do. By cleaning up our fiscal house. We've tabled four consecutive balanced budgets. The debt is going down, taxes are going down, and services are going up because now we can afford to pay for them. And we've also not only cleaned the fiscal house, we've put the economy at the center of all that we do. Because a successful economy makes all the rest possible. An economy that is inclusive and sustainable, invested in health, education, and the people that make it work. An economy that rewards collaboration, dynamism, entrepreneurship, and innovation. And an open economy that benefits from its connection to global markets. Canada and Quebec have been working hard and with much success in forging new and promising trade relationships, of course, with Europe and Asia. However, the fact remains today that there is no single market more critical for Quebec than the United States of America, our ally and longtime friend. This is where the local and the global come together. A regional economy that supports millions of jobs on both sides of the border through trade, investment, and interdependent supply chains. Any misguided measure that disturbs our interconnected economies, in my view, is short-sighted and counterproductive. Because these measures are bound to have a negative impact on our respective economies, they sap our competitiveness at a time when it faces more challenges than, if, than ever before. Americans and Quebecers make things together, innovate together, and we've been doing so for centuries. Our economies are optimized for that. One need look no further than Plattsburgh, New York, where more than 150 Canadian-owned businesses, many from Quebec, employ over 15% of the local workforce, strengthening cross-border trade and investment flows. Thanks to proximity to market, integrated value chains, and free trade, over 70% of Quebec's exports cross into the US. Many of these goods are then transformed and crisscross back and forth over the border, creating added value to both societies. 32% of all goods imported into Quebec comes from your, your country. Quebec buys more goods from the US than China, Germany, the UK, France, and Italy combined. 32 US states call Canada their number one export market. It's a great relationship, but a fragile one, too. 
Quebec remains a dedicated supporter of free trade and believes in a modernized and renewed NAFTA because it will be good for Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. It is in the interest of both Quebec and the U.S. to seize all opportunities to solidify our partnership and strengthen our competitiveness on the continent and around the world. Quebec global reach depends in large part on the work of our international representations, the work they do on a daily basis to promote Quebec, defend its interests, promote its interests too, and build bridges with other societies. Through a network, and not many uh, subnational states have this, through a network of nearly 30 offices strategically, strategically located around the globe, a mix of local and posted staff amplify, amplify the, voice, the voice of more than 8 million Quebecers to create market opportunities for our companies, promote the French language, our distinct Quebec culture, and address global issues we value, such as the fight against climate change and the promotion of women and human rights and civil liberties. I want to address here a special thanks to Jean-Claude Lauzon, our Delegate General in New York City, and his team, their dedication and hard work to growing the pie together, yes, growing the pie together with our American friends is extremely important for all Quebecers back home and for the continuation of a strong cross-border relationship. I am particularly proud of Quebec's world-class industries that adapt, forge strategic partnerships, and gain new market share. The name Quebec has made for itself as an AI hub in North America. Our leadership in Canada in the promotion and adoption of electric vehicles, something that has had a positive impact in the US as well. And for instance, I recently learned that White Plains, New York, is getting five all-electric school buses from the Quebec company Lyon Electric, Lion Electric, that's great. Since we're here in New York City, I'd like to also highlight the partnership between the city's sanitation department and the Quebec company Efenco. I think we have people from Efenco with us today, bravo, whose new stop-start technology is showing a 30 to 40% improvement in fuel efficiency for the department's field of trucks. And of course, our clean and renewable hydropower exports to New York England and New York support the regional transition to a low-carbon economy. And also, of the I'm proud of the exciting recent announcement by my government, the federal government, Apple, Rio Tinto, and Alcoa, to invest in and create ELISIS, a more than a one-half billion dollar project, headquartered in Quebec, that will develop the world's first carbon-free aluminum smelting process. We have to stay ahead of the curve, always. The aluminum industry is part of Quebec's DNA. It is why our government decided to become a partner in this innovative and unique project. So we've set ambitious targets in our Quebec strategy to develop the aluminum sector in order to stimulate industrial expansion and strengthen its competitiveness in the world market. Our producers, and this should not be forgotten, are key suppliers to American manufacturers, and our raw aluminum exports support more than 160,000 U.S. jobs. And 90% of Canada's aluminum comes from Quebec. More than 50% of U.S. primary aluminum imports come from Quebec. Materials that are transformed into American-made fighter jets, cars, trucks, everyday consumer products. So from a national security standpoint, yes, from a national security standpoint, Quebec aluminum has been since World War II an integral part of the arsenal of democracy. The United Steel Workers Union and its partners in Quebec, the Syndicat des Métallos, de la FTQ, are largely aligned in recognizing that Canada's steel and aluminum exports to the U.S. are fairly traded, and that Canada has shown its willingness to strengthen its laws, as well as its cooperation with the U.S. to fight unfair trade. So let's work together to address global market distortions and dumping in key industries, instead of resorting to self-inflicted wounds, such as Section 232 tariffs on steel and aluminum, that will and have already shown an effect on workers on both sides of the border. Because it's precisely now, at this very moment in time, that we should be united, uniting to take a constructive path forward. This is essential if we are to face together the, the real issue confronting North American steel and aluminum, oversupply from China. We have to do this together. This is what we should be together, rather than engaging in a futile and ultimately destructive conflict within North America, which is just a distraction from the real issue. 
In facing global challenges side by side, we demonstrate joint leadership and show the world that our partnership is more than just about business. You were kind enough to mention one of my children. His wife also has been, is a nurse in the armed forces and has cared for US soldiers in Afghanistan. Fortunately, they drove back and safe home. They're, he's not, they're not there anymore. But I always wonder, I'm filled with perplexity in the recent turn in our relationship when I know that today and before we fought together. Our partnership, therefore, is more than just about business. It's above all, it's about a broad community of shared, shared values, and I hope we continue to share the same values. The Quebec-US friendship, forged over hundreds of years of trade, investment, cultural exchange, should always be defined by our commitment to peace and prosperity. The US, Canada, and Mexico achieve great things when we put our interests and resources together. A recent symbol of strength and success through partnership is the united bid that enabled the US, Canada, and Mexico to earn the right to host the World Cup of Soccer in 2026, the greatest sport event in the world. A beautiful friendship on behalf of a beautiful game. En terminant, j'aimerais souligner l'amitié qui nous unit et vous remercier de votre présence ici ce soir. Il est important, autant pour nous que pour les États-Unis, d'accentuer au lieu de limiter nos partenariats. La concurrence se fait de plus en plus féroce à l'échelle mondiale. Nos économies sont intégrées et la stabilité de nos relations politiques et économiques permettra de maintenir la confiance des investisseurs de part et d'autre de la frontière. In closing, allow me to pay a special tribute to the Foreign Policy Association. The FPA, you know that, was founded in 1918, 18, at the time when the U.S. was involved in heated debates about the Treaty of Versailles, the League of Nations, and America's place on the world stage. It was a time of great idealism, facing off against incredible challenges and deep-seated competing national self-interests, a story told magnificently by Canadian historian Margaret McMillan. While no two historical eras are, uh, are ever, ever the same, I feel we are also confronted now with a rapidly changing international order, one in which the U.S. must remain, remain a key constructive leader that brings together liberal democracies and fosters global cooperation. In that respect, the FPA is even more relevant than it was 100 years ago. The FPA matters by encouraging thoughtful debate and bringing together a diversity of people curious about world affairs, willing to work across partisan and geographic divide, and committed to imagining and crafting solutions to problems rather than exacerbating them. In other words, staying true to how a very famous New Yorker, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, when he described the FBA as performing a high duty in facilitating the lucid presentation of the facts of world problems and their impact upon the United States. For this, I am deeply appreciative and humbled to receive the Statesman's Award. Thank you once again, FPA, for organizing such a wonderful event, and thank you all for your attention and interest. Merci. Enjoy the rest of your evening.